Example 158. Four fertilizers are to be compared and three watering schemes. The results are shown below. So we have the fertilizers here across the top. We have the watering schemes here. The problem in the notes actually says that this is a randomized block design experiment and we're going to use the treatments as the uh, fertilizers. That's what we're interested in. One way you can see this is randomized block design is the layout of the table indicates that you know each cell can be categorized in two ways, right? We have fertilizer B for this whole column, so all the numbers here are linked to fertilizer B. But then, for example, 10 is also linked to seven times per week watering, right? So this 10 kilos, which is the uh, yield for the plant matter that comes from this little uh, set of conditions, you know, is linked to two things: fertilizer B and this amount of watering per week. Okay, so having said that, let's go ahead and start out by writing out a couple of hypotheses here. The problem basically is always going to assume the same HO and HA, so we don't have to worry about those too much since they're always pretty much the same. HO is always that all the means are equal, right? So in this case, it'll be the mean for A is equal to the mean for B is equal to the mean for C is equal to the mean for D. And HO is that what at least one differs, right? At least one differs. And you know, I should say differs significantly. So I'll just uh, you know, say that here abbreviated, it differs significantly from the others, right? All right, good. So we have HO and HA, and this is for the treatment means now. We could also run a simultaneous hypothesis to compare the watering schemes, which we could do, but um, we'll kind of just talk about that briefly towards the end. I don't need to write out the whole hypothesis. But what would the hypothesis be for the watering? It'd be the same thing, right? It'd be basically the mean for three times a week watering is equal to the mean for five times a week watering is equal to the mean for seven times per week watering, you know, so on and so forth, versus at least one difference significantly. All right, so we have the hypotheses. Our next step is to always get the data. The data step here takes a long time, so let's get on it right away. We need to do the correction factor first, remember. From the correction factor, we're going to jump over to sum of squares total, right? The total sum of squares. Once we have the total sum of squares, we move on to the next piece. And the next piece is going to usually be SST, the sum of square for treatment. Now we're going to have an additional piece. So I'm going to say and we're going to need to do sum of squares for block, right? So we're going to have sum of squares for treatments and now sum of squares for blocks. That's the new thing in randomized block design. And then we go from there and we move on to essentially the sum of square for error, which is the same thing we've done in the past. And then once we do all that, we're going to go to the ANOVA table and we're just going to plug everything in. Okay? So ANOVA table after that, right? All right, so that's our procedure. That's our logic to the problem for the data step. Let's start with the correction factor. If you remember the correction factor, it's basically just the grand total or the summation of all the response variables squared over the sample size. Now, the total here is given, luckily, in the table, so we don't have to do that ourselves. That's 130. That's the grand total of all the 12 numbers in the cells. Then we'll square that and divide by, again, 12, because there are three rows of four values, so that's going to give you 12 total. All right, we're going to work that out in a minute. Let's do that. Before I uh, do that, I want to show you my calculator that I've also done at the same time a number we'll need for the next uh, part of the problem. For SS total, we're going to have to square all the values in the table, right, and add them up. So I've done that. We're going to get 1504. So I'm just going to write that down here beneath this. I'm going to say, hey, the summation of the y, i squareds, all that stuff, is going to be 1504. So I'm just going to put that there for us later so I don't have to worry about losing it. Okay, so let's work out the correction factor. It's 130 squared divided by 12. When I do that, I get 1,408.3 repeating. So 1,408.3 repeating. Remember the repeating, it's important. We need to keep that. I'm going to store that in my calculator as a variable called x, so I can use it over and over again for my other calculations. Now, the next thing we're going to do is SS total now, right? So SS total. So SS total is the summation of the yi's minus, yi squared, pardon me, minus the correction factor. So our correction factor is 1408.3 repeating. So we do 15.04, which is what we said the summation of the yi squareds is, minus the correction factor. If we do that, we end up with 95.6 repeating. Okay, so we have those two numbers. Now we go for SST. 
The SST is not too bad to do. Remember, it's a set of fractions that we're going to have. And when we do those fractions, we're going to basically take the total for each of the treatments. So in this case, it'll be 34 squared. We're going to square the total and we'll divide by the number of values in that column, which is 3 here, right? Plus 33 squared divided by the three values in that column, right? Plus 35 squared divided by 3. Plus, last one here, 28 squared divided by 3. And then minus the correction factor, right? Minus the CF, the correction factor. Okay, let's see what all that gives us then. Just time consuming to type it in, but remember we don't need any special parentheses. So 34 squared divided by 3 plus 33 squared divided by 3 plus 35 squared divided by 3 plus 28 squared divided by 3 minus the correction factor x and get the answer 9.6 repeating. Now, 9.6 repeating, I'll just write there neatly. Don't forget that when we use it, we want to keep a lot of those sixes in there, right? We want to count for those sixes that are repeating. Okay, now we need to do the next step, which is new. It's the sum of squares for blocks. Now, I didn't write out the formula here, but I want you to know it's the same as the sum of square for treatment, but you treat the blocks as the means that you're dealing with now. So we're going to use these numbers here, the totals for the blocks squared, and then divide by the values that are in the row, right? So that'll literally be, in this case, for the first one, 31 for three times a week squared, divided by one, two, three, four values, plus 56 squared, divided by its one, two, three, four values, plus 43 squared, divided by its one, two, three, four values, minus the correction factor. So it's very analogous to the sum of square for treatment. In fact, you couldn't tell the difference between them except for we're calling one the treatment, we're calling the other the block. All right, now let's go ahead and type that stuff in then. So we'll have 31 squared divided by 4 plus 56 squared divided by 4 plus 43 squared divided by 4 minus the correction factor, which I stored in my calculator. So I get 78.16 repeating, 78.16 repeating. All right, and that's your sum of squares for blocks. Now, continuing with the data step, we've done SST, SSB, now we do need to do SSE. The logic behind the sum of square for error is always the same, no matter which problem you're working with. It's basically the idea that if you take the total sum of squares, SS total, and you subtract off SST, and SSB in this case, then that'll remove the variation that's due to those treatments, right? So the variation that's due to the fertilizers, the variation that's due to the watering scheme, that will be removed from the model, or from the uh, total variation, and that will leave you left over with the variation that's due to every other factor that we didn't account for in our model, and those are the things we call error. So that's all we have to do is subtract these numbers. So we have these numbers, let's just go ahead and do the subtraction, right? SS total is 95.6 repeating. We're going to subtract from that 9.6 repeating, which is the SST, and then we're going to subtract 78.16 repeating, which is the watering scheme, right, and the blocks. All right, let's see what that gives us ultimately for the value we're looking for. So we have 95 point, I'm going to do 666666, just keep typing it in, just to get a few decimal places there, and then minus 9 point, and then again, I'm going to write a bunch of sixes, because 9.6 repeating, minus 78.1, and then again, a bunch of decimal places repeated. And if I do that, I get 7.83 repeated, so 7.83 repeated. So that is your sum of square for error. All right, now, we need to go to our ANOVA table now and take all this information with us to plug into our ANOVA table. So we're going to need the total sum of squares, we're going to need the sum of square for treatment, sum of square for blocks, sum of square for error, and that will all go into our ANOVA table, and that's what we're going to do next.